All right, guys, let's go ahead and implement this bad boy. Go ahead and type in define and just go ahead and name your uh, method whatever you want. But I'm just going to name it multiply because it makes sense. We're going to multiply two different polynomials and go ahead and pass in the self variable and create another variable called s underscore poly underscore object. This is a very descriptive variable. And go ahead and type in pass and let me explain to you what the heck is going on. So what this cell variable is going to represent is the first polynomial object. And what this variable right here is going to represent is the second polynomial object. And uh, just to uh, make sure that you guys don't forget that, I'm just going to comment it real quick. So you guys can have it right here and just, uh, you know, keep it in mind. Let's go ahead and take that. Copy this whole thing and paste it right here and take this whole thing and paste it right here. All right. So what the self variable is going to represent is the first polynomial object. What the second uh, variable is going to represent, which is this one right here, is the second polynomial object. And guys, remember, in each polynomial object, it has a list of terms right here. So whenever we want to access the list of terms that exist in the polynomial object, we can just use get poly and that will do the job. But uh, for now, just uh, know that uh, the self variable is going to represent the first polynomial, the second variable is going to represent the second polynomial. All right, let's go ahead and implement this. Go ahead and type in for f underscore poly n range 0 to self dot actually why should I even type this if I can just do this all right and uh, I'm gonna explain to you what the heck is going on but let me just first type it go ahead and type in for s underscore poly n range just copy this whole thing save a bunch of time and what is it what is it where is it it's right here and just change that to second poly object and go ahead and type in pass all right so what do we have right here guys remember what this program is going to do is basically is going to multiply two polynomial objects in each polynomial object there is a list of terms. Inside each term, there is a coefficient and there is power. So what do we want to do? We want to take each term that exists in the first polynomial and multiply it with each term that exists in the second polynomial. All right, so uh, how is this uh, for loop is going to do that? Well, guys, think about it. If you have a for loop that is going to loop through each um, term that exists in the first polynomial and another for loop that is going to loop through each term that exists in the second polynomial, what is that going to do? You're going to basically have the ability to access each term in each polynomial object. So that is the reason why we're using nested for loops so we can access both terms that exist in both polynomial objects. All right, simple enough. And let me just type this up a little bit. And uh, just go to the end. And go ahead and type in the new power. And set that equal to self dot get poly. And go ahead and pass in that dot get power and don't forget these because <laughs> they can actually mess up your program and uh, and uh, allow it to stop so don't forget to actually put in the parentheses and go ahead and type in plus and just copy this whole thing and paste it right here and just replace it with mm, let's see second object second object 
and second poly, second poly. Well, guys, what are we doing in this line of code is basically this. We're taking every term that exists in the first polynomial object, and we're saying, okay, go to the first polynomial object. Get all the terms back. All right? Now I have a, a list of terms back, as you guys can see right here. It's a list of terms back. And then I want to access the first term. Because, guys, remember, this f underscore poly is going to represent a number. 0, 1, 2, 3. And then you guys know how to access a list by using the index. So in the index of 0, go ahead and uh, get that term back. And I want the power of the term that exists in a specific index. So this is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to get the power of each term that exists in the first polynomial. And what do I want to do with that? I want to sum it with each power that exists in the second polynomial. That's pretty much it. You're taking the power the power that exists in the first polynomial and you're summing it with each power that exists in the second polynomial. That's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and type in the new uh, I don't want to misspell that, so let's just go ahead and get it from here and paste it and capitalize the C and we have it and set that equal to um, let's see can we just copy and paste that yes we can just go ahead and type in this right here but instead of get power go ahead to the term class again and get get coefficient so change that to get coefficient guys don't forget your parentheses and uh, let's see, we're going to take this whole thing and we're going to multiply. Let's get coefficient. All right. So let's see if we have everything good so far. We go into the first polynomial object. We're getting a list of terms back. We're accessing a specific term. We're, go we're getting the coefficient of this specific term. And we're basically multiplying it to a coefficient that exists in the second polynomial object. That's pretty much it. So the reason why this is uh, this looks a little bit weird is because this code is really compact. And in other words, let me just uh, put that right here so you guys can see everything. Uh, I mean, this code is pretty short, but there's like a ton of logic in this code, guys. So what we're basically doing is this. We're looping through each term that exists in the first polynomial, and also we're looping through each term that exists in the second polynomial. F underscore poly is going to represent a number, and S underscore um, poly is going also is going to represent a number. So what's going to happen is this. It's going to go to each term that exists in the first polynomial and sum it with each term that exists in the second polynomial. It's gonna go to, and this line of code basically means, it's gonna go to the each coefficient that exists in the first polynomial, and is gonna multiply it with each coefficient that exists in the second polynomial. That's pretty much it. 